Hey guys, I'm going to be going over my favorite way to do authentication. Um, this is something I implemented in a previous video, and I'll link in the description below if you want to see the actual code for how this works. But I'm kind of just going to do an overview of how it works and how the whole thing flows together. And the reason why I like it so much is I think it strikes a nice balance between being secure enough, but also you're not making too many requests to the database where you still get some of the advantages of using a JWT token. So this strategy, what it does is it uses a um, two JWT tokens, a regular token and a refresh token. One of the tokens lasts for a short amount of time, like a minute, whereas the other one lasts more like seven days or a month, a longer period of time, and is used to refresh the shorter lived token. And every time we refresh the um, shorter lived token, we do a database request. So instead of doing a request to database on every time, we only do it when the first token expires, which could be every minute, could be every two minutes, whatever your application you want to do for it. So you could end up querying your database, for example, every minute instead of on every request, which is a lot better. So let's walk through how this works. So here's my client, here's my server. Um, the first thing what my client will do to like get access to the website is to log in with an email and a password. Now, of course, we'll authenticate that and then we'll send back two tokens to the client. Like I was talking about, we have one token here that's short-lived and a longer-lived token here. So the short-lived one we're calling just a JWT token. Um, I'm going to say it expires in a minute, but this could be a little bit longer. Depends on your application, how much exposure you want. And I'm signing that with a secret. Um, and for now, I'm signing it with the same secret for every token. And you don't want anyone to see that. Um, and then this other token, the refresh token, it's going to last longer. I said seven days, so a week. So if a user hasn't logged in in seven days, then they can't, they're going to have to reauthenticate. Um, and so also, the way I signed this token is I did another secret. But I also sign the token with the hashed password of that user. So what that means is if I want to validate whether the token is correct, I have to get the secret and the hashed password of the user to validate. And the reason for this is if the user um, forgets their password, it automatically will invalidate um, all tokens that are out there for that user. So for example, if someone gets hacked, I can just tell them, hey, reset your password and then they're safe. No one can access their account anymore. So that's the reason why you see I'm using the secret and a hash password um, to sign the token itself. Okay, and then on every request that the client makes, this is what's gonna happen down here. So let's say they wanna access some kind of information, like they wanna get their, use. they wanna just like see, I don't know how many pictures they have or something, some type of request. It'll first come here and it'll check whether the token is valid. And that's this first token up here, the short lived one. If it's valid, it hasn't been, you know, it's been within a minute that they've gotten the token. We go ahead, just make sure we check the token and there we're storing the permissions. If they have permission to store the data, to fetch the data, if they do, good. We just give them the data and they go on. So we make no intermediate um, request to the database here. So that's really nice. We just give them their data and they're good to go. But here's what we do. If the token has expired, it's been more than a minute, um, it's invalid. So what we will do is we will decode the refresh token. So we're not verifying that the refresh token is valid. We're just decoding it because in the payload of the token, um, we're storing the user ID that's associated with the token. So then what we can do is we can fetch the user. So now we have the user associated with that refresh token. And what we can do is we have their password, right? We have their hashed password. That's important. We're not storing their regular password, but it's been hashed. So we have their hashed password, and so we can use that hashed password plus the secret to actually verify the token is valid. So we do that. And again, at any step here, if it fails, we're unable to encode the token or decode the token for some reason. If we can't fetch the user, we're throwing an error. Um, or we're, we're not throwing an error, or we just assume the user is not logged in because they give us bad tokens. So we are gonna check if the refresh token is valid by using the secret and the hash password and make sure, making sure it hasn't been seven days. 
since the user has made a request. And if that's the case, that all works out, we will refresh the refresh token and refresh the token. So we're giving them two new tokens here on their request because they give us a valid token. So for another minute, they can make requests without querying the database. Um, and so we already fetched the user here once, so we just use that to uh, create both the tokens and then they go on their way. They will validate the permission and fetch the data again. And so this is just a nice little cycle. Every time they make a request, if it's been within a minute, they just go through, they'll have faster requests. If not, we check the refresh token and give them a new one if they need it. So now this is something where you can play with this number here, because as you can see, um, it'll slow, you know, it slows down requests. Um, after a minute, you have to make another fetch to the database in the middle here, so that will definitely slow it down. So you wanna basically make this as long as you can without um, basically putting out too much exposure or threat if something went wrong with your application. Um, basically the idea here is if the permissions get messed up, they're only messed up for a minute and then they should be good again. Ideally, permissions should never get messed up. This is just kind of a safeguard if for some reason you send a refresh token back and the user just does not accept it or something or blocks it or puts a new token in, it's only for a minute that it's bad. So this could be 20 minutes for your application, it could be five minutes, just depends on um, what your application can handle. And so that's like the main thing you wanna tweak and see and make longer if you can, because then you don't have to make as many requests. But you know you could get out of order. But this is, the, this is what I really liked, is you're not having to query the database on every request so that's really nice. And I also like being able to invalidate the refresh token with the, um, changing the password. So if someone gets hacked, they're not just exposed. They, we can just invalidate their tokens out there. So that's pretty nice. So this is the method that I just implemented and I really like. And that I'll be using for applications that I want to add authentication to. And it just adds a nice little balance. We're not requesting stuff from the database too often but we're doing it enough so we're up to date and our application doesn't get stale. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.